Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So this is gonna be a 6th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. Usually on this channel we do 9th age battle reports. This time uh, I had an old friend of mine coming by to play a 6th edition game. Um, he made a 6th edition Vampire Count, uh, Vampire Ghost Army actually. Um, so you can see it in the background. I'm pairing off against it with my Dark Elves, so in this format we were playing that you had a Vanguard in your army, you had the main bulk of your army and the rear guard. For me the Vanguard was going to be a unit of Dark Riders, a unit of Corsairs and a Colton Chariot. The main army included my BSB, my High Sorcerer, some Pegasus, Colton Chariot, some Witch Held, some Black Guard, some Crossbowmen and the Hydra, and the rear guard uh, was composed of a unit of uh, Colton Knights and a Beastmaster on the Manticore. For my opponent, he also had uh, quite a army to, to field. So his Vanguard composed of the um, the Scurvy Dogs and the Deck Droppers. So these are like Fell Bats, Flying Bats, uh, Witches, Shot, I believe. And he also still had these, um, this Gunnery Mob, so 10 Zombie Pirates with a handgun. Then in his main bulk of this army, he had uh, the well, the middle on the picture. So he had this Queen Bess, which is a very, very, very big cannon. Then he had some Karen 8, so that's small cannons at strength 7. He had a load of vampires, including Luther Harkon on the chest over here. Then he had two uh, bloated corpses. And he had a Siren, which is kind of similar like to a Banshee. Uh, then he had animated hulks, so these guys have strength 5, d6 attacks each, and resilience 4 each. Um, and then he had some uh, two blocks actually of these uh, zombie pirates. So here on the picture you can only see one, but there was another one. He had some scurvy dogs and he had some rats. And then in the back he's in the rear guard of his army, he still had a rotting leviathan. And he had two more units of deckhands with handguns. So I will, this is mostly going to be a, um, a battle report with a lot of pictures, just because his army also looked really stunning to me. Um, so here we have the first picture of his army, a um, bit of a close-up. So he took models from anywhere he could find, basically, and he just put some uh, some zombie piratey bits on it to make it a bit more piratey. For example, the, the hats here on the models. And he also has these awesome um, banners for his units. This is going to be the setup, so we are playing a diagonal uh, game. Um, and there were some objectives, so we had to take the center of the board, I believe. Um, I had to make sure that the units of mine were going to go into his deployment zone. Um, so that is quite quite suitable for me, I would say, because his army is mostly a bit of a gunline type army, whilst my army doesn't really like to keep the long range and, and just uh, whittle down the enemy from a long distance so I really have to close in and uh, try to bridge the gap. So here we still have some deployment pictures I believe. Um, here we have a close up of Luthor Harkon in a zombie pirate mob, uh, a Karen 8, Queen Bess and in front we have the bloated corpse and the siren. Now for me, my deployment, um, so from left to right in this picture, I have my BSP, my Corsairs, my Witch Elves, my Hydra, Blackguard, Colton Knights behind, uh, the High Sorcerer, some Dark Riders, and then the rest on the other flank. So here I still have a, a close-up picture of the Siren, because I thought it was an amazing model to, uh, to see on the table. And also, I had to take a picture of this, so this is 6th edition rules. You have to guess ranges for your shooting weapons, most notably the cannons and the mortars. Um, so how this works is that you cannot pre-measure anything during the game in 6th edition. So also for your charges, you just have to declare your charge, hope that you're within the charge distance that you have, which is twice your movement. And then if you are, then you can make the charge and otherwise you have a failed charge. Uh, so for the cannons, this meant that um, well, basically, you have to guess spot on, and then you have to subtract the amount that you think the dice will uh, deviate from um, from your perfect guess. Um, but yeah, it, it leads to a lot of uh, just estimating, guessing, and there's quite some player skill involved, I would say, into guessing correctly. Um, but for a tournament game, it's a bit less suitable, because you will have moments where you are measuring on the table, um, and it gets quite murky quite quickly. 
So for a casual game it's perfect, but for a tournament game I would say it's a bit less suited. Um, after my first turn, well my opponent had the first turn and you can see already that uh, he hit my Beastmaster on Monticle once and my Hydra. Uh, so both had received a cannon shot that did three wounds to them, so the Beastmaster is already on its last wound and the Hydra only has two wounds left. In 6th edition the Dark Elf Hydras didn't have regeneration or anything, um, or at least not that I could find. So basically it's just a 5 hit points, resilience 5 monster. And I would say that it's not that good for its point cost, but uh, many opinions differ about that. Um, so what I did in my turn is that I uh, cleaned up his bloated corpse with my monticle on the left. So once the bloated corpse dies it deals uh, like a... It, you have to do a toughness test if you're within range of it. Uh, it has a small template that comes down. Um, so for a Monticore it's quite manageable to survive. So I thought it was quite a good way to clean that up. On my left flank I try to ignore the deck droppers, so the fell bat kind of models. Um, and just want to put pressure on the on the rest of my opponent's army basically. And then on the right side I don't really want to fully advance into the the gunnery mobs of my opponent that are all three on the right side, so I have my BSB going all the way around the flank. Actually off picture on this picture, but uh, um, but yeah, then the rest will just um, move up with with the rest of the army once the gunnery mob has been deleted. Uh, as you can see, I didn't really move up my Dark Riders and my Cold One Knights. It's because 6th edition still had quite severe stupidity rules, so my cold ones were just having some fun with the Dark Riders. Here we have some close ups, so here we have the Cold One Chariot on the left side. We have the Beastmaster getting close to the enemy ranks. And here this is the middle of the board with the Hydra staring at a Banshee and me not realizing that a Banshee in 6th edition uh, does damage based on discipline or leadership rather than uh, any other aspects of your unit. So this is my end of opponent's turn 2, I believe, so after his shooting and combat and everything. Um, actually, this is even after my turn, because the Cold One Knights also moved up. So my Beastmaster died to the uh, Rotting Leviathan that charged him. And the Rotting Leviathan did an overrun, I believe, and then I could charge with my Cold One Chariot and my Dark Riders onto it. Um, the uh, deck droppers on my left side, they charged into the flank of my Colton Chariot. They did manage to put a wound on. Um, however, I did some damage back and I managed to luckily hold that charge. And then probably I'm going to grind them out now. And then on the right side, my opponent just annihilated the Hydra, I believe, with just the shot of the cannon. Um, and he also killed some black guards. I don't remember exactly how, but I think he just shot them. Oh, it was a bloated corpse that actually dealt some damage to it. And then we still have the Sirene, uh, dishing it out now with the Witch Elves. So Witch Elves don't have any magical attacks, and 6th edition is still a rule set where if you don't have magical attacks, you cannot harm uh, these models in any way, basically. So you really have to bring your magical attacks. Um, but yeah, even through combat resolution, you can still whittle down pieces like this. Uh, so... Basically, if my opponent doesn't really do a lot of damage in combat one turn, then I will be able to just crumble him down. Once again, we have some close-up shots, so here you can see the left flank, here we can see the right flank. And here we can see the extreme right flank, where my BSB is getting ready to charge into the flank of this gunnery mob. So these gunnery mob, they're quite funny. Um, I wouldn't say that they're efficient, but they are quite funny. Um, so. 6th edition rules, once again, you can only shoot with the front rank of your unit, so out of these units there's 5 shots coming out, which is not that much. Um, and they hit you on a 6+, plus, regardless of uh, anything, I believe. Um, and then on a roll of a 1, they actually hit their own unit. So you have 5 shots coming out, hitting on 6s, 1s on their own unit. They're pretty bad at shooting, to be honest. Uh, but sometimes they do get lucky and you get like three sixes and as an opponent you're quite amazed that you're going to get so much damage from a unit like this. But um, yeah, I think that they're quite fun. Just It's just a fun army to play against. 
And then we go to uh, my end of the opponent's turn, I believe. So he shot a bit more. Some uh, black guard died. I really wanted to try these guys out because when I played 6th edition previously, 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> um, I didn't really think much of black guard, but then maybe I didn't really value stubborn that highly. Now playing them again, 16 points per model is a lot for just a resilience or a toughness 3 model. It's uh, I would say it's, it's not really worth it, um, because even though they just have one attack strength 4 each, it's it's not really cutting it. So maybe this is not the right matchup, but just 10 models, it's, it's already quite pricey for what they bring. Here on the left side, I did manage to charge into the Rotting Divider, however, I did not manage to kill it. So my opponent had a very juicy flank charge with his animated hulks onto the flank of my Cold One Chariot. Uh, otherwise, the deck droppers and Cold One Chariot are still dishing it out. And then, uh, as you can see on the left side of this picture, my Cold One Chariot actually fled away, um, which was not that surprising to me. And I left my opponent's Rotting Leviathan on two wounds left, I believe. And then this turn, in my turn, I was gonna charge the Carinate with my High Sorcerers on Pegasus, um, and on the right side with my BSB on his Gunnery Mob. In the center, I was gonna charge with my Black Guard onto the flank of the Gunnery Mob in the forest. Um, and I believe that was all the charges. So, yeah, basically, I'm, I'm trying to get ready for a flanking maneuver by my opponent with the Rotting Leviathan and Animated Hawks. And I tried to still push through, uh, but I mean, these big blocks of zombies, they look really daunting from this side. Um, and they look quite massive, to be honest. On the left side, I do manage to get rid of the deck droppers. Otherwise, I have my crossbowmen, but they're not really going to do a lot anymore this battle. Um, so this is still an overview. Uh, yeah, so this is after my charges and after rearranging my lines a bit, uh, my Cold One Chariot did rally. And this is going to be it. We do clean up the deck hands, <laughs> deck hands on um, both sides, so we only have the unit in the middle left. Um, and the High Sorceress also does manage to clean up the Carinate um, and does manage to get an overrun. Here, my opponent charges my Cold One Chariot. I decide to flee, um, but in the shooting phase, he also manages to get a direct hit with his Queen Bears on my Cold One Knights, which means that a large template or a small template, either template, is going to move over my unit, uh, inflicting strength 10, AP 10 to every single model that it covers. And um, I'm quite lucky to, <laughs> lucky to still have one Cold One Knight standing, to be honest. Uh, but once this queen best hits, it really hits quite hard. Um, yeah, so this is the current state of affairs, and luckily I have some line of sight with my witch elves onto the uh, rotting leviathan. Because in this edition of Warhammer, there's no thunderstorm or monstrous uh, d6 hits yet. So the rotting leviathan actually only has 5 attack strength 5, and that's it. Whilst my witch elves, they do have one attack base, additional hand weapons, and they have frenzy, so they go up to three attacks in sixth edition with poison. So even four models in contact, they already provide twelve attacks, which is quite decent in this uh, in this edition. So here we go with the witch elves against the rotting leviathan, and I also had to take a picture of these awesome-looking animated hulks. So that's uh, what this is. Uh, on the left flank, I do manage to proceed up and get rid of the Carinate with my chariot. My High Sorceress um, reforms a little bit. Uh, my BSB manages to get into Queen Bess. And I think this is actually the last picture. So I do manage to clean up the Rotting of Item with my Witch Elves and also later the animated hulks that my uh, opponent added into the combat. Um, and my opponent still manages to shoot two wounds onto my High Sorceress with his Brace of Pistols. Uh, so I was quite scared to still lose her maybe at some point, um, but luckily I did not. And magic-wise, actually, my High Sorceress didn't really do that much this game. Uh, also because Vampire Ghost gets a lot of Dispel Dice extra uh, in order to make them a bit more magic, magic resistant, because they don't have any means of getting magic into the list. 
So Luther Harkon himself provides extra discipline dice for the army, which means that usually we would end up on a six power dice versus six discipline dice situation, which logically means that you don't really get any um, any spells through. I only got one spell through at the end of the game, which was a soul stealer on the uh, big block of zombies. And that deals with strength 3 hit to every model in the unit um, with normal armor saves. However, zombies don't have an armor save, so that quickly annihilated half of the unit. By that time, it was also in combat still with the Corsairs and the Colton Chariot. So then, yeah, it was not going well for the zombies, let's say that. Um, so in the end, I actually managed to mop up most of the stuff of my army, except for Luthor Harkon with his uh, two vampire buddies and his big unit of zombies. Whilst my opponent did manage to whittle down my army also quite uh, quite steadily, with me just having the Colton Chariots left, um, some infantry, but the big monsters, big scary stuff all had died to the cannons. All in all, we had a really enjoyable game. Um, I would definitely play again if my friend uh, would be up for it. Um, and 6th edition, yeah, it's, um, it's a different game. <laughs> It's, there's some rules that I would say have improved in Ninth Age. There's also some character that has been lost uh, down the road with uh, guessing ranges and, and stuff like that. Also, it feels a bit clunky in the sense that if you have a unit and it just overruns, then you're going to face that way. It's going to take a while to, to repair from that. Also, if you go into a forest, basically your unit is just locked for two turns. Um, that makes for some tactical decisions, which is quite nice. On the other side, the fluidity of 9th age is also quite nice with units just being able to go and, and being mobile. So I don't know, on, on a large scale tactical game, it's way more difficult in 6th uh, in edition to get a unit to go from one side of your flank to the other. Um, so that does limit your, your options a bit here and there. On the other side, it also has a charm that um, deployment, for example, matters way more than in, uh, in Ninth Age. With that, I would like to thank you for watching, and I will see you the next time.